Welcome to the unveiling of this latest Leicestershire County Council Green Plaque. A very special uh, thank you to Keith and Chris Brown uh, for allowing us to place the plaque on the wall of the former barracks and also for hosting today's event. Thank you. Yeah. 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 Can I warmly welcome the pupils of Parkland Primary School? I'm always really pleased to see children coming along to the event because you take back the history and make it live again in your communities, so thank you very much for attending. We're also fortunate to be joined by members of Colonel Barrett's former regiment, the Royal Leicestershire Regiment, as well as representatives from the University Hospitals of Leicester NHS Trust, where Barrett was a consultant until his retirement in 1962. And I've been yep. hearing how important he was in the field of urology. We're also honoured to have the Royal Tigers Association standard here with us today and hopefully we'll take that out for the photographs too. And finally, a heartfelt thanks to you, Captain Bob Allen, MBE, on behalf of the Royal Tigers Association. We wouldn't be unveiling this pact without you having nominated Colonel Barrett for the Green Pack Board. The aim of the Green Pack Awards is to bring people together to nominate and to vote for the historic people and places they deserve, feel deserve recognition. John Pridham Barrett was a very popular choice with the people of Leicestershire. And today we're honouring this brave soldier and distinguished surgeon with his very own green plaque. John, or Claude as he became known to his colleagues, military counterparts and close friends, was just 18 when he joined the Leicestershire Regiment, arriving in France in July 1916. Bob Allen will no doubt fill you in on the military and professional achievements of this extraordinary man and his strong connection with Leicestershire. But I'd just like to touch upon what was without doubt the pinnacle of his military career. It was during active, serve, active duty in France the 21-year-old John Barrett displayed the courage and compassion that would earn him the highest award for gallantry that a British or Commonwealth serviceman can achieve, the Victoria Cross. This led me to look into the origins of the medal and I was very interested to discover the following. The Victoria Cross was introduced, not surprisingly, by Queen Victoria, who had instructed the War Office to strike a new medal that would honour acts of valour across the ranks, irrespective of birth or class. It is said that senior military figures were against the introduction of the new medal, one of the reasons being, historically, only senior officers were awarded medals of bravery as it was considered to be their leadership that drove men on to victory. In spite of some opposition, MPs decided on December the 19th, 1854, that the Queen should create a medal that would be, and I quote, an order of merit for distinguished and prominent personal gallantry, to which every grade and individual may be admissible. John Barrett, a young lieutenant who displayed extraordinary and sustained courage and compassion, admirably fits this description. He was decorated with the Victoria Cross by King George V at Buckingham Palace on the 13th of February 1919. How fitting then that a hundred years later, Bob Allen, on behalf of the Royal Tigers Association, nomi nominated John Barrett for a green plaque, and that the people of Leicestershire voted for him as one of their six favourites to be honoured with the award. I sincerely hope that with this green plaque, we're able to remind people of Wigston and of Leicestershire of the hero that once lived among them. Now it gives me great pleasure to hand over to you. Thank you. Congratulate you on having done your homework where it's <laughs> well, well done. 
Uh, certain things that have just been said uh, will be repeated again, so forgive me, but uh, what, what I'd like to do, first of all, on behalf of the Regimental Association of the Royal Leicestershire Regiment, it gives me great pleasure to acknowledge the achievements of Colonel J.C. Barrett, V.C., who is commemorated today at Glen Palmer Barracks, which was the home of our regiment from 1881 to 1960. It is therefore fitting that Colonel Barrett should be honoured here. Mr. Jeremy Cridlin, his nephew, and the great nephew of, of Colonel Barrett, is unfortunately unable to be present today. He is the most senior surviving relative. John Cridlin Barrett was born on the 10th of August, 1897, at Leamington Spa. He was educated there at Arnold Lodge School and later at Merchant Taylor's School, where in addition to his studies, he became a leading member of the Officer Training Corps, the OTC. Upon leaving the school, he commenced medical studies at St. Thomas's Hospital in London, but with the outbreak of the Great War, he enlisted in 1916 and was commissioned into the Leicestershire Regiment earlier that year. He was posted to the 5th Battalion, our territorial, county territorial battalion in France in August 1916. He was wounded at Goncourt in February 1917 and in July 1917 promoted to lieutenant. He was gassed at Gore in May 1918. At the age of 21, for his actions at Pontrouet on the 24th of September 1918, he won the Victoria Cross, which was gazetted on the 14th of December, 1918. The citation reading as follows. For most conspicuous bravery and devotion to duty on the 24th of September, 1918, during the attack on Pontrouet, owing to the darkness and smoke barrage, a number of men lost direction, and Lieutenant Barrett found himself advancing towards Forgan's Trench, which contained numerous machine guns. Without hesitation, he collected all available men and charged the nearest group of machine guns, being wounded on the way. In spite of this, he gained the trench and vigorously attacked the garrison, personally disposing of two machine guns and inflicting many casualties. He was again severely wounded, but nevertheless climbed out of the trench in order to fix his position and locate the enemy. This he succeeded in doing, and despite exhaustion from wounds, he gave detailed orders to his men to cut their way back to the battalion, which they did. He himself refused help and was again wounded, so seriously that he could not move and had to be carried out. In spite of his wounds, he had married on and, and could not move and had to be carried out. In spite of his wounds, he made it on and his spirit was magnificent throughout. It was due to his coolness and grasp of the situation that any of his parties were able to get out alive. That's quite a citation. The Victoria Cross was presented to him by Her Majesty King George V at Buckingham Palace on the 13th of February, 1919. During the same year, in Leamington, his hometown, made him a freeman of the borough and presented him with a gold watch. He was present at Westminster Abbey for the burial of the unknown warrior on the 11th of November, 1920. After the war, he resumed his medical studies at St. Thomas's and qualified as a member of the Royal College of Surgeons, MRCS, <coughs> and a licentiate of the Royal College of Physicians, LRCP. He obtained an MB in 1925 and a fellowship of the Royal College of Institute, sorry, Royal Institute of and College of Surgeons in 20, 1928. Following undertaking various posts at St. Thomas's, he joined the Leicester Royal Infirmary, where he worked from 1929. He was also a consulting surgeon at the Leicestershire Gen Leicester General Hospital and other Leicestershire hospitals. He retained his commission in the Territorial Army and was awarded the Territorial Decoration in 1936. He commanded the 5th Territorial Bat Battalion from 1937 to 1939. 
believing that at the age of 42 that his medical role would be better served during the war in the Royal Army Medical Corps, he transferred and commanded a surgical unit in Northern Ireland. He was senior surgeon at Leicester Royal Infirmary from 1945 to until 1962. In 1950, he was appointed a deputy lieutenant for Leicestershire and completed 40 years military service and became honorary colonel of the Royal Leicestershire Regiment Territorial from 1953 to 1958. He died in Leicester on the 7th of March, 1977. His name is commemorated in the Heritage Panel at the Regent Hotel in Leamington and on memorials in our regimental chapel in Leicester Cathedral. On the 1st of August 2018, a Victoria Cross commemorative inscribed paving stone, which were being laid nationally throughout the country, was laid at the main war memorial in Leamington. It is fitting that representatives from Leicester Royal Infirmary are present today and we welcome. Finally, may I add our thanks to those of Leicestershire County Council, and particularly Karen Wilde, who have made possible the awarding of this plaque, we are most grateful. Also, I must thank our hosts Keith and Chris Brown of Draper Properties for their generous and continuing support and help to our regiment on this and other occasions. Thank you very much indeed. Chris for their huge hospitality and kindness in, in uh, helping us as a regiment and to events like this as well. So we're great, very grateful indeed. So as a small memento for you, we'd be very pleased to present you with that. If you'd like to unwrap it, then we'll have a photograph. So there you are. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. much. I appreciate that. Oh, it's a fifth draft.